doing, good people? This is the eight bit animal. Okay, so today's game is an arcade port. Um, the original arcade game was made by Sata Corporation, who really doesn't have a huge backlog or really very track record as far as arcade titles is concerned. And the home version was published by Romstar, who also doesn't have a really varied track record when it comes to their video game releases, especially on NES. It's a shmup. It's um, from 1989, which will explain my one gripe with this game. But yeah, today's game is Twin Eagle. Okay, so in Twin Eagle, you control this helicopter, or if you're playing two players, two, one of two helicopters. And your mission is to, your mission basically is to fly from level to level, destroying buildings, rescuing hostages, and all that. And also defeating enemies, and avoiding being shot down. So, your standard, standard schmuck there. Now, the arcade game, was really interesting because it had it made heavy use of um, digitized sound effects for the soundtrack and um, the backgrounds were really detailed so the, these are two things that really weren't prevalent when it came to schmucks back in the 80s you didn't have schmucks with really polished soundtracks and really polished uh, backgrounds. Usually, most schmucks were, you know, if they were based on on Earth, you flew over a really gray or brown landscape. You flew over water, rinse and repeat. Soundtracks were, you know, some little MIDI sounds, stuff like that. Some pings and pops for the for the explosions. That about it. Twin Eagle soundtrack, the arcade version at least, had this really loud guitar and heavy drums and all that. It was really polished. Well, the NES version, because of the graphical limitations of the NES, and it being 1989, and it being Seta and Romstar, you know, there were a lot of things that we didn't know could be done with the NES, one. And two, you know, some people just didn't know how to do the things well that were known about the NES. And that kind of shines graphically with this game. Because while the, while the gameplay as far as, you know, movement and all of that, while all of that is polished, while the sound effects are... While the music and sound effects are okay, graphically this game is pretty. Eh, it's not really. It's not really spectacular. There's nothing stand out about it. So this game is incredibly graphically mediocre, while the gameplay is pretty decent. Um, now, of course, there aren't as many enemies on screen as in the arcade version, but that's to be expected. The NES, I mean, look at Double Dragon. In the NES version of Double Dragon, there were only two enemies on screen at a time, and it had to be twins. So, I'm not expecting screens full of enemies on in a schmuck, or, you know, or with bullets flying all over the place as well. Especially from a company that isn't known for their graphical prowess. But, again, this game, that doesn't mean that this isn't a good game. It's a fast-paced schmuck. Um, now, is it as fast as the game I'm playing on talking about tomorrow? No. But there aren't many NES titles that are. Now, um, also, finding a copy of Twin Eagle is fairly easy. Um, you should be able... It's not a, in -demand, a very in-demand game. Um, you should be it's not like a gradius or a life force so you should be able to find this game for about five bucks or less 
I would guarantee that if you find it at about five bucks at or up, you shouldn't get it because it's overpriced. But definitely, you know, if you're a, especially if you're a fan of schmucks, pick this game up, give it a give it a whirl. You'll probably find a nice little hidden gem that you didn't know that you would dig as much as you are digging it. Just again, um, be prepared for some 1942 looking graphics in this 1989 schmuck. This has been the 8-Bit Animal, and I'll catch you beautiful people tomorrow.